as you all know, we do prison work here at the Abbey, and I've been corresponding with a number of inmates, uh, incarcerated people for, for years. So there's one young man who has been writing to me for a few months. He's, I think, in his late 20s, early 30s. He has a life sentence. His life sentence was not because he did something violent, but because he was driving the car and his friends went in to do a robbery and in the course of the robbery, somebody got killed. And the law is that even if you're not the person who kills the person in the, in the robbery, if you're driving the car, you get a sentence like that. So that's his situation. Yeah. He didn't kill anybody, just driving the car. So he's new to Buddhism, very new. And uh, he's just getting his feet wet, figuring everything out. Uh, he was married before, but now his wife is divorcing him because it's very hard to keep a marriage going when one person's incarcerated. So I wrote in one of my letters, I, recently I wrote him and asked him about COVID because in the prisons in the U.S., there, the pandemic is really going, yeah? And so many people are getting sick and the government is doing very little, the prison system is doing very little to protect the incarcerated people, but also the staff because the staff are the ones that bring the virus into the prison. They're also the ones who bring the virus from the inmates into the community. So it's really a bad situation in, you know, for the inmates. So I wrote him, yeah, and uh, he is in a special unit of the, uh, of the prison. He asked to be there. It's a protective uh, unit because he doesn't want to be part of any gang activity, okay? But that also limits uh, his mobility and what he can do, okay? So anyway, this is what he wrote to me. He said, uh, we are fortunate to have a roof over our heads and a sound body as many people are lying in hospital beds as I write this. This is somebody who was incarcerated in a cell that's probably seven by nine feet saying this, okay? Who probably is able to go out into the yard in COVID time, maybe once a week if he's lucky. Okay, so this is who's saying this. He says, right now, is the best time for those of us who are healthy to progress on the path and strive for bodhicitta. The teachings that you supply me with oh, have influenced my life with the determination to practice until the end, to understand that the existence of all beings in an unenlightened state is a consequence of the dominion of afflictive emotions. And this gives me the desire to extinguish those very subtle and deep-rooted propensities in myself for the benefit of others. There's a person in prison saying this, not a person who has their freedom walking on the streets, okay? When I am doing simple things like washing my bowl or cleaning my living quarters, I observe my mood and try and cultivate joy. I also address my body, speech, and mind and their activities daily and work to avoid the 10 non-virtues. Growing up, I never had confidence or faith in myself, but in my heart, I know I have the courage and firmness to stick to this path no matter how long it takes. Yeah. 
So he says, I wish I could study under the guidance of a teacher like you, but I'm thankful for the time and help you generously offer me. You know, and then he goes on to say, uh, I hope when I'm ready and my studies are further that I can discuss some of my doubts with you. And uh, because he says, um, some of the reading material you have provided me with, um, a lot of it is pretty mind-blowing stuff. And it gives me new eyes to see the world with. I mean, what an incredible, optimistic, virtuous attitude for somebody who's locked up with no chance of getting out. Wow. You know, this person is an example for our practice, isn't it? Okay, so I thought to share that with you and ask you please to make prayers for Daniel and all the other uh, incarcerated people who are really doing their best to practice in a very difficult environment. <laughs>